What's up, everybody? Carl's Bundle here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you. So another one that came out on the 26th of August that I was curious about because I wasn't sure this band actually existed anymore. But uh, they do as of this year. In fact, they just got back together. So we're going to go over the newest offering from Becoming the Archetype, Children of the Great Extinction. This again comes out on the 26th of August on Solid State Records. Formed in 2004 in Atlanta, Georgia, broke up in 2013, and then reformed this year. I guess the whole issue was not being able to keep a stable lineup there for a while. This is their sixth album overall, again, first in 10 years. And this is, well, at least as described in the archives, progressive melodic death metal and metalcore kind of intermingled. And, well, I mean, uh, solid state, that generally means they're a Christian band. and. They definitely are. Now, I've been a fan of these guys, especially their first two albums, Terminate Damnation and The Physics of Fire. I really like their style, like Mellow Death, but like some added brutality to it. And uh, for a Christian band, they kind of seemed a little darker, and I kind of got into that. And, you know, seeing that this band came out with an album, I was like, you know what, let's uh, see what they're all about. I mean, they came back with some Dan Seagrave artwork. Their first album had Dan Seagrave artwork, and I really liked that. Even brought it up in an underrated albums thing. So, let's see what we got. And, well, I think they trimmed off a little bit much of the Melodeth, and I feel like they're kind of going for the proggy side more. I feel like they are definitely flirting with the progressive side. It's more like kind of a metaphor of, um, you know, everybody goes to the pool, and then they dip their toes in the water, and then they ask each other, are we swimming now? And that's kind of where they're at. Yeah. I mean, baseline, I would say metalcore is the overall sound on here, but you do have like progressive leanings in terms of some of the guitar work, lead work, and synths. There's a lot of synths on here. A lot. Can be a bit much, but I mean, I guess if you're going into prog, especially like modern prog, you're probably going to have some synths. And going from their earlier stuff, again, which I was a big fan of, you go from more uh, the gothic sort of like evil sounding ones that are more dark and sinister to again more like kind of playful proggy sense to sort of crawl and noodle about kind of match up with the guitar harmonies sometimes it's really good sometimes it just sounds a bit much and when you couple in how like out front the vocals are and how fiercely layered they get you kind of get this wall of sound in spots where you don't necessarily need a wall of sound when you like you said you want to choose like darker kind of gothic sounds not necessarily like twinkling stars <laughs> because a, a lot of a lot of lighter ended synths appear here versus the darkness to create the ambience now to its credit it does have some of those gothic synths that do pop up namely on the calling which you know does have a dark sinister vibe there's a little bit more of like a kind of death doom feel to some of the riffs and then it kind of leads into more of what i expected in general like more heavy mellow death riffs. There's even some vocal passages that kind of reminded me of like Bloodbath when, you know, Michael Ackerfeld was in there. And The Curse kind of has some like Meshuggah-esque breakdowns, like early Meshuggah, talking about like pretty like more of the Nun EP. Yeah. But like some like cool machine gun guitars and some like deeper, more brutal vocals and even some blast beats. But kind of the overall feel of this is maybe reaching for a different kind of accessibility than they had before. Like, I know their later albums definitely flirted with more clean vocals, but I feel like clean vocals become a big part of this, or at least a bigger part than they have been. And I'll be honest, they're kind of hit or miss. Yes. To be honest, it was more so miss for me, but the whole album in general, to me, sounds like something that I would have been into in my early 20s, around the time, like, As I Lay Dying was bigger, Bleeding Through, or The Human Abstract, a lot of those bands that got sing-songy, like, and I, I think I would have been into this more then. Yeah, I and mean, that is the period of time where they came out, like, the first album came out in 2005, and... At that time, I was really big into metalcore. I was really big into melodic death. And, well, I'm still pretty big into melodic death metal, but metalcore, I don't know, like, my my tastes have shifted back further in terms of metalcore. Like, like you know, just, like, Converge and, like, Early Cave-In and Earth Crisis. Like, the old-school fucking heavy metalcore where, you know, uh, Killswitch hasn't shown us how to get on the radio quite yet, which, nothing against Killswitch. That's, They're that's good. True. That's but... True. I think with bands like Kill Switch Engage and As They Lay Dying, they're sort of the dynamic shifted. And, well, it's weird because 
Becoming the Architect really didn't fit in that dynamic until a little bit later in their career and kind of now. Like, they were definitely more centered on being heavy and brutal. And this is definitely missing that. But what you have in place is, I would say, like, adventurous, possibly for them getting outside of their sound. But they come back to the metalcore well very often on here. Yes. Because there are definite times in this album where it's decent. Like, in the calling, it's a bit darker overall. There are some good growls. The The riffs are okay. I do wish that the drums weren't as, like, condensed as they are um, compressed. I think more so is the word I'm looking for. Drum-wise, it kind of reminded me of, like, Will Putney's style of production, which I like, and I still have issues with, like, the levels of compression that he puts on, especially the drums. Yeah. Because yep. they just get way too... Like, I need booming drums. I do, and these too. don't sound do like too. they're very booming, but they're also yep. very up front in the mix, so you get this big compressed thing that's just like, well, that's loud. And and while I like, you know, later Fit for an Autopsy, that record a couple years ago that I really liked, Sea of Tragic Beasts, but I like the guitars in that album. The drums, again, were a little compressed. But there are some other moments in this album. Um, the Awakening, when that music finally comes in after that ambient little beginning that it had the ambient kind of dreamy starscapey thing when the music does finally come in it's really good but then they kill it with the vocals and honestly when they try to be accessible like there are some like good ones like i think the remnant being maybe a little bit cleaner especially the chorus i think is a pretty good song it kind of has like a gojira ish vibe like you know you have these kind of sludgy bendy breakdowns and Kind of a cool thing on here is at least when it comes down to the breakdowns, the riffs are a little bit more intricate. They're not like kind of your, you know, dime a dozen metal right. core They're not breakdown. cookie cutter metal breakdowns. They're yeah. not everything that you've ever heard ever on any metal core band. Like they, they do a good job of making these cool riffs, but the overall ambience behind it is sometimes an unnecessary thing too. Constant. Constant. And this is where I think the clean vocals actually work on here. Like, there's a good dynamic between the heavier verses and this big clean chorus with, like, cool crawling synths that actually match up with the guitar harmonies. I think that's kind of cool. And I will state that the lead work on here isn't bad, it's, actually, it's for, good. for what it is. It's actually really good. Um, there are actual, um, like, neoclassical solos that go on and some harmonies. And, again, for what it is, it's not bad. And I wouldn't call... The leads that are on here typical for metalcore either. No, I mean generally metalcore. I just think of like you know, all right, it's a lead melody that matches up with the riff. Right. And there are those in here, but there's some legit, really shreddy leads. And yeah. I do like it when they incorporate the keyboard in that, like you know, kind of complement the melodies. Like that's where the keyboards, I think, are good. Right. Not but, not in the not in like the ambience behind it all the time and the twinkling like oh I'm in a dream like. That's not necessary all the time, but yeah, when they complement the leads, they're they're decent. Yeah, but this definitely has its issues, honestly. Like, there are some songs in here where I just feel like they tried too hard to maybe push for accessibility of some kind, like The Hollow. I really like the straight-up mellow death riffs that, you know, kind of carry the verses in here, but you get down to this giant chorus, which this chorus is very overproduced. Like, there are so many vocal layers on it, you have this very clean kind of like radio rockish vocal that is dominating all the growls behind it but there's like 30 of those layered behind that and it really just takes away from the song you know before that it actually is doing some pretty cool stuff just in terms of like just a good solid riff good solid melodies but i'll be honest oh. before before that before they kill it and it's really not until the second time they do the chorus because the first time they do the chorus it actually really sounds like gojira yeah like newer gojira like like Magma Gojira. Yeah. Yeah. Fortitude. And then there's The Ruins, which it just feels like a safe metalcore song from 2005. Like, this is probably the most basic one. Like, it squeezes in some heavier moments. Like, there's, you know, some blast beat sections, some deeper vocals, but this also features Ryan Clark from Demon Hunter. And, well, I mean, it kind of sounds like a Demon Hunter song, honestly. Like, <laughs> it, 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 you know, they're like the. Breaking Benjamin of Christian Metalcore. I'm not the biggest fan of him anymore. There was a period when I did like him. And, and that uh, period has expired. But yeah, this one just screams uh, the safe nugget. Like, you get some washed out, you know, clean vocals. Again, like, the vocal dynamics are, again, like, so layered and obnoxious. But there's some weird transitions in this. Like, you have this whole section where it drops out to clean vocals and it just turns into, like, 
Well, I mean, uh, it kind of sounds like a Breaking Benjamin song for a second, and then it goes right into blast beats and growls, and I was like, dude, uh, pick one. Yeah. Pick one. Yeah, pick pick one thing. And then, but here's another thing, too. A lot of these songs, The Ruins, The Awakening, um, even The Curse, a lot of these songs end abruptly. Like... They end before the song ever really plateaus. They do okay with like some builds like in the beginning of The Awakening it's got this nice kind of ambient quiet guitar build and like you think it's gonna do something. Okay, if you're going for a more progressive style, the point of progressive music in general is to keep building and keep building and keep building, not get halfway there and then stop and then end it and then go to another song. And that happens a lot. Yeah, and and writing in movements, you know, that, that seems to be like a hallmark of prog. And like again, leaving off at the end, like where you feel like you know it, it should be a complete thought. Like there should be like something that bookends or yep. references the beginning. Yep. yep. Something like that. And again, these songs kind of just stick to you know more of that metalcore style of writing. Like you know, let's maybe end it on a breakdown or you know kind of peter out on one riff, but. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, breakdown, end. Yeah. And there are some songs that get outside of that, but where I thought I would hear more of the progressive elements in the last track, The Sacrament, which is the longest track in here, almost nine minutes. Eight and a half, eight minutes, 35 seconds. And it just feels like two longer songs on here kind of smushed together. Like, it has, like, some good repeated refrains. There's some gang vocals on it. And it definitely seems to tie in the themes of the album, which I think is about, like, colonization of an alien planet. I, I guess. I guess. I mean, that's what the cover is implying. That's what all the titles, which all begin with the, by the way. The. So I think maybe that's the theme. But it, it doesn't necessarily just kind of tie the album together. Like, you expect well, at the end to be this grand closer. Especially if you're doing like more progressive stuff. Right, and exactly. And the, and that's what I was thinking. Maybe I thought, all right, eight minutes and 35 seconds, what are they going to do with it? They write maybe half a song, and to be honest, the last two or three minutes is just bloat. Yeah. I, there, because there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot going on, you know, musically. They're not... They're, they're not even like bookending riffs. They're not bookending parts. It's just this part that kind of just draws out and there's nothing really entertaining going on. In fact, the last minute or so is just like melody and noise. There's already a lot of ambience here. And while there are songs that I like on here, I just feel like, uh, again, like dipping their toes in some different stuff, it doesn't quite gel. Like I can hear the ideas yep. they have yep. and possibly the directions they're trying to go, but I think maybe, you know, being gone for 10 years, you wanna make sure you don't alienate your old fan base. But at the same time, you don't want to maybe come out flat with just kind of the same thing you have been doing. So you kind of get this effort that's somewhere in between. And maybe, I don't know, it's for the fans, the band decides, like, you know what? They responded well to this versus this. Maybe this is the direction we go. Or, like, or you know, fuck that. We're going to do this again. Or, I don't know. I'm not in the band. Uh, even though this band has, like, had a lot of members, I've never mm -hmm. been in it. So overall, I'm going to give this two and a half stars. I think it's okay. Like... You know, it's it's not terrible. I've definitely, you know, given two and a half stars to bands that, you know, they had decent albums, and there are songs that would definitely return to, but as a whole, this album's just kind of, again, okay. Like, there's good riffs, there's good melodies on it, but I think just how it's put together and, you know, some of the songwriting choices in terms of, like, dynamics, you know, they don't gel as well. Again, this band has been gone for 10 years, and, well, they weren't the same band when they broke up initially than they were when they started. They started, again, with a much different sound that sort of evolved kind of towards this. So I don't know, like, what all they plan on doing in the future, but honestly, I think you should check it out. It's an interesting listen. I mean, uh, it's got its proggy moments. It definitely has, like, some seriously heavy, nasty breakdowns on it, some solid riffs and melodies. I just think it's okay, but uh, it's worth checking out. I'm going to give it a two. I think if you're going to be gone for a decade, look at all of what music has gone through in the last decade. And look at, like, metalcore in general. There's been even a progression in basic metalcore over the last ten years. And you're going to disappear for that long. You know, obviously you still want to come back as yourselves, but if you're going to try something, you know, at least commit to it once or twice. You know, at least make one or two of these songs sound different than the other eight, nine songs on the album. 
and it seems like what it is is at the at some point in each song they try something different but they, they it's almost like they scare themselves and they go back to the well because eh, we can't go too far so you know let's go back safely to what we know let's throw in a couple elements but at, at no point in this record did I feel they ever really committed to really giving it a go on this new sound that they're trying to create. They committed to the concept, but... They, you're right, exactly. Yeah, they committed the to the, the concept, but there are some okay moments in this record. There are there were a couple times where I banged my head or even got a brief sour face at a breakdown, but overall, it's okay. It's not the greatest thing. It's not the worst thing. I, You know, if, if you like music like this, I would implore you, by all means, to check it out. This is not really my bag and it hasn't been for quite some time but you know my music tastes have evolved so much over the years just like the progression of music you know that it's not necessarily for me so two stars obviously still check it out i'm not completely shitting on it but it's just not necessarily my wheelhouse so if you enjoyed this review give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time we are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there is a link on thrallsmetal.com, which is down below. You can hit up our Patreon there, and you can also get a t-shirt there if you want, and we will have new stuff in our merch wheelhouse. See that? Yeah, buddy. Relatively soon. Fucking hats. Relatively soon gives us kind of like a good base. <laughs> like, well, it will happen, but... Yeah. You know, when it happens. When it happens, and it'll be you know, soonish. Stuff. Near the time of soon. Yes. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, liking, subscribing, all that stuff. It's been an amazing fucking ride. Like I said, you know, getting close to 12,000 subscribers. Really close. Actually, we're less yeah. than 30 away right it's, now. It's, uh, it's crazy. And it is all due to you guys. You guys make this so much fucking fun. All of this has been awesome, and we look forward to just doing a ton more videos because we want to throw to you all the metal content we possibly can because we're obsessed. Kind of lunatics I mean, about it. Right. Uh, I, you know, I mean, it's this, debatable. This is my whole life at this point. It's yeah, metal and thralls of metal and bands and fucking earworms and it's just it's it's there. We have become the thralls of metal. We're going to get him an appointment to get dewormed at any point. <laughs> it's just the vet won't call us back. So, of course, I have to thank you one more time because you're all fucking awesome, and we will catch you later.